welcome to this video lecture of general anatomy today our topic is the integumentary system content in the topic which we are going to discuss in this ppt or the lecture is first we will start with introduction to the integumentary system after that we will talk about the functions of the skin next what are the different parts of the integumentary system are there and we will study about each in detail that is the epidermis dermis and hypodermis after that we will cover about skin appendages that means the associated glands which is related apart from the skin and at last we will study about the disorders of integumentary system first we will start with the integumentary system basically integument the other name for the integument is skin so we are in other words we can say skin is also known as integument skin and its appendages make up the integumentary system so basically the integumentary system when we are going to talk about the organ system it is a part of an organ system or it is a type of organ system in which the main structure it is skin and apart from that associated glands or the associated layers or the associated parts are making up the appendages uh, a fatty layer which is located beneath the skin is known as hypodermis which lies deep to it there are two distinct region of a skin which we are talking about they are epidermis dermis so these are the two parts or the two different areas in which the skin can be divided beneath that lies the hypodermis so what are the functions of skin is there the basic function is skin is the outermost covering which is present in our body so it is helping in protection by protection we means it provides cushion and insulates our body and is waterproof so basically whatever the water constituents that is present in the environment that is remaining outside the body apart from that it helps in protection from chemicals heat cold and bacteria that means the microorganisms apart from that heat cold and chemicals all these the protection is provided by the skin and the skin can also protect as the, it is acting as screen for the ultraviolet radiation that is coming in the environment or that is coming from the sun with the help of ultraviolet rays it synthesizes vitamin d which is a uh, one of the important constituents of our body which is required for the, our normal growth and maintenance in the body skin also regulates the body heat it prevents unnecessary water loss so because our body is consisting of around 70% of the water so unwanted water loss or unnecessary water loss is also prevented by the skin and further it is also act as a sensory receptor or it is helping in the sensory reception in our body basically there are nerve endings which is located on the skin so that's why we are able to feel when we are touching anything we are able to feel anything now we are going to talk about the different layers or the parts of the skin so basically skin or the outermost coating or the outermost layer of skin is known as epidermis which is formed by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium cells or it is a part of the epithelium there are four types of cell which is present in the epidermis layers they are keratinocytes melanocytes merkel cells and langerhans cells so basically the keratinocytes lies deepest and it produced the keratin pigment that is the tough fibrous protein which is helping in the rigidity of the skin melanocytes make up dark skin pigment melanin which is responsible for our skin color merkel cells are associated with the sensory nerve endings so that whatever the sensory receptors are accepting the stimulus that can be properly transferred towards the brain so that we are able to feel the sensation 
and Langer himself is basically responsible for the micropages or they are like the dendritic cells. There are di different layers or the cells are arranged in the various layers which is forming the various layers of the epidermis. So the layers of the epidermis which is lying from deep to superficial are it is mostly composed of four to five layers of thickness. So from the deeper to the more outer it is stratum basal or the germinativium which is consisting of single rows of cells attached to the dermis and these are the youngest cells which is present in the epidermis layer. Next is stratum spinosum, basically the spinosness in artifacturals, tonofilaments, bundles of proteins and basically this is responsible for the resistance of tension. Stratum granulosum, basically these are layers of flattened keratinocyte cells producing keratin that is the hair and males made of, of keratin itself. Next is stratum lizidum which is only present in the areas where thick skin are lying that is the areas of palms and soles. And last or the top outermost layer is stratum cornea which is composed of horny layers that is mostly the stratum corneum layer is formed by the cells which are dead and it is multiple layer in thickness. This is the structural representation like what are the different layers of epidermis are there and the types of cells which are located in the left diagram it is representing the various layers of the epidermis along with the dermis and in the right pictures it is depicting that what which type of cells might be located in which layers. Next component is dermis. Basically dermis or in other words we can say because when we are knowing that organ system is there it is formed by the different types of tissues. So epidermis can uh, in other words can be told about this is a layer of epithelial cells. Dermis is the connective part or the it is formed by the connective tissues. So they are strong flexible connective tissues basically it is acting as your hide. Basically it, has, it is acting as the place where the appendages or the cells can be located. The cells which is forming the dermis layer is fibroblast, macrophages, mast cells and WBC. There are various types of fibers might be located because it is a connective tissue. So it is consisting of collagen fibers as well as elastic and reticular fibers also. In these layers there is rich supply of nerves and blood vessels are there so it is acting as the sensory receptors organ as well as the blood vessels whatever the requirement of non nutrient requirement is fulfilled by these layers. It is helping in critical role in the temperature regula regulation due to the presence of the blood vessels. Further the dermis can be divided into two layers that is the papillary areas and the reticular areas. The papillary areas are co going to compose of areolar connective tissues and it includes the dermal papillae. Reticular is the it is in these areas there is the reticulum that is the network of collagen and reticular fibers are located. Next is what is the differentiation between a thick and thin skin that is this is the diagrammatic representation of a thick and thin skin. So uh, in the below portion we are seeing that these are the reticular layers after that papillary layer is there and up above that the epidermal layer is located in both the skin. So the ideally this is the diagrammatic representation of the thick and thin skins are there. So the reticular layers, papillary layers and after that all the layers of the epidermis are there that is the stratum basal from the deeper most to stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum and stratum cornea. So basically only difference is there in case of thick skin that stratum lucidum layers of the epidermis is located but in case of thin skin it is absent. Next that is the underlying layer between the epid uh, below the der dermis layer is the hypodermis which means the hypodermis which is meaning the below the skin. In Latin 
this subcutaneous is in latin word is known as below the skin and it is also called as superficial fascia the fascia is the latin word which means band in anatomy it is the fascia means sheet of connective tissues the fatty tissues which stores fat and anchor skin that is the areolar tissues and the adipose cells are located just above these hypodermis layers the different pattern of this accumulation of this hypodermis cells are different from in male and female now we are going to talk about the skin color basically there are three kinds of skin pigment that is present in our body they are melanin carotin and hemoglobin so basically the melanin is the most important which is responsible for our skin color because the concentration of melanin is going to determine the color of our skin carotene is from the carrots and the yellow veggies that is responsible for the yellowishness in our skin and hemoglobin is the pink of a light skin so basically hemoglobin is a part of blood melanin in granules passes from melanocytes that is it is found in same number in all the races to the keratinocytes in the stratum basal it is digested by the lysosome and the various it the concentration is going to cause in the variation in the color apart from that the melanin is responsible for the protection from the ultraviolet rays versus vitamin d which is still unidentified till now now we are going to talk about the skin appendages basically the skin appendages are derived from the epidermis but extend into the dermal layer so mostly the glands or the parts of the skin appendages are going to derive from the epidermis itself but it is going to extend into the dermal layers these includes hair and hair follicles sebaceous gland sweat gland and nails now we are going to talk one by one about each first we are going to start with nails basically the nails are made up of hard keratin it corresponds to the hooves and claws so basically the in case of humans we are take, telling it as nails in case of birds it is known as the hooves and claws of the different animals it grows from the nail matrix so this is the diagrammatic representation of the nails that what are the parts of the nails are there that is the pre edges of the nail is there in the lower part there is nail matrix is there from where the nails is going to be derived next is hair and hair follicles that is it is hair and hair follicles are com combining to the together to form the hair complex it is also derived from the epidermis and it is located in the dermis and it is found everywhere but palms soles nipples and parts of genitalia in our in a human body the hair and the hair follicles can be found all over the bodies except the palms soles nipples and the parts of genitalia that is where the hairs are absent next we are going to talk about the function of the hair that is the hair is responsible to provide the warmth that is the it is found less in man than other mammals so basically the since a man is a modified or it is the developed mammals are there so in other mammals the quantity of the hairs are more compared to the man it sends light touch of the skin and also it is helping in protection from as a, in the form of scalp that is that harmful parts that are being stored and they are re removed out of our body in the form of scalp that is what are the parts of the hairs are there the parts include the root which is embedded in the skin and the shaft that is the projecting above the skin itself the makeup of hair is basically the hair is formed by the hard keratin further it can having it is having three concentric layers that is the medulla that is the core of the hair the layering is core cortex which surrounds the medulla and cuticle that is the single layers which is overlapping in nature
now we are going to talk about the types of hairs the type different type there are various types of hairs in our body they are vellus that is they are fine and short hairs are there further depending on the length of the hairs it can be intermediate hairs and the terminal hairs are also lo longer and the coarser hair that is, is hardest layer is there the average growth of hair is around 2 mm per week which is it can be in the two phases either it can or the resting phase which is after growing to a certain amount there is chances that the hair might not maintain their integrity and they can shed away the hair loss can be of thinning that is the hairs can become thin with increasing age and apart from that the male pattern baldness can be seen like in the forehead areas the hairs are the hair loss can be perceived further the hair color is det determined by the amount of melanin for black or brown and distinct form of melanin for the red white is responsible if white hair is there that is the decreased melanin or the air bubbles can be perceived in the hairs and it is genetically determined through the influence by the hair home and environment next is sebaceous gland basically the sebaceous gland can be found all over body or it is found in on the entire body except the palms and toes it produces sebum by the holocrine secretion and the sebum is basically in other words we can say that is the oil and it is helping in the lubrication of the skin next is sweat gland basically the sweat gland is responsible or it is also found on the entire skin surface except nipples and parts of external genitalia it prevents from overheating in our body basically the production of the sweat may vary from person to person it may vary from 50 500 cubic centimeter to 12 liter per day and it is mostly composed of what humans are having the most efficient sweat glands only the mammals are having sweat gland it is produced in response to stress as well as heat so if heat is going to increase automatically the production of sweat will be more the types of sweat gland is acrine or the merocline which is most numerous that is the true sweat gland is in these the true sweat can be perceived that will contain 99% of water apart from that water some salts and trace of waste can be seen in those sweat secreted by this acrine type of sweat gland and it is opens through pores next is apocrine that is the axillary anal and the genitalia area is containing the apocrine kind of sweat gland basically the ducts open of the gland in the hair follicles the organic molecule in it decomposes with time so that the order in our body can be perceived and next is modified apocrine gland that is the serominous that is the secrete the ear wax and mammary gland which secrete the milk in case of females what are the disorders of the integumentary system might be there it can be burns that is the threat to life that is the catastrophic loss of body fluids dehydration and fatal circulatory shock infections the burns can be of different types that is the first degree burn which is going to cover only the epidermis area and only the redness can be perceived example the sunburn second degree burn will include the epidermal layer as well as the upper dermis layer that example is including blisters and the third degree is going to contain the full thickness of the skin can be damaged apart from that infections can be seen on the skin and the skin cancer this is the diagrammatic representation of the different various burns are there that is the first burn first degree of burn is going to include the epidermis and only the redness can be perceived second dermis the second degree of burns is going to include the epidermis as well as the upper part of the dermis layers which includes or the perseverance is the 
blisterings will be there and third degree burns is going to include the entire skin might be destroyed these are the references from where the materials has been collected that's all for today